Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. It is late August by the time that I'm posting this. And I have a question for you. When you think of summer, do you include September in your summer? And I think the answer probably depends on the region that you live in and whether the warm weather continues into that month. Of course, if you're in the Southern hemisphere, this question does not apply, right? Because you're in winter and moving into spring at this time. So for me, even though summer begins in late June and ends in late September, in my mind, summer is June, July, and August. Like once June 1st hits, it's summer. And once September 1st hits, in my mind, it's autumn and it's time to get my pumpkins out and my fall decorations and all of that. Yeah, I know that may seem crazy to some, but that's that's how I roll. I did so many videos talking about seasonal fragrances for the summer. We're talking about tropical fragrances, coconut fragrances, fragrances that stand up to the heat, beachy fragrances. I thought it'd be fun to look back over those fragrances across those videos to see which ones did I actually reach for this summer? Mind you, it's impossible to wear the entire gamut of fragrances that I talked about in those videos. However, it'd be fun to see which ones got attention this summer and gasp if I had to narrow the summer fragrances list down to the 10 best, the all-stars, the MVPs, the hall of fame, summer fragrances, only 10, what would make the cut? I have no idea what the answer to this question is because I'm going to do this on the fly as we're filming. So let's get to that. So I'm going to stick to these two shelves here and I'll share what's on these shelves. And it's not that I haven't worn other fragrances outside of these shelves or that I don't think other fragrances are appropriate for summer. Of course, of course, I wear a variety of fragrances all year long. But when I think about traditional summer fragrances, I tend to think about fragrances that have a tropical vibe like yellow florals. I tend to think of coconut fragrances or fragrances that have a sunblock type of vibe that smell beachy in some form or fashion that have the lime and the coconut. I also <laughs> think of tropical fruits in, fra in fragrances uh, for the most part and citrus I associate with deep into spring and into summertime. So most of those fragrances are sitting on these shelves. I have fragrances on other shelves. So just to be clear. So what we're looking at, you know, over in that corner are my fruity florals. And then I have a bunch of florals back there. Some of my summery fragrances are sitting here in the front. Up there are your general tropical vibe uh, with coconut in them of some sort types of fragrances. And then looking at this corner of the shelving up in here are my citrusy fragrances for the most part. I've got rose. I don't really associate rose with summertime, although some of these fragrances are really appropriate for summer. And then I've got more florals back there. In case you're wondering what's happening here, <laughs> my husband does wood carving as a hobby on the weekends. And he made me this beautiful bowl here that I just adore. So because these angel muse bottles don't sit up anywhere, they have their own special bowl. How privileged are they? And because I am blind as a bat at this age, <laughs> I need a magnifying glass sometimes to look at the bottom of fragrance bottles for batch codes and for concentrations and whatever. And he made me this also. Shout out to my sweet husband. All right. So let's then look at the fragrances that I actually reached for this summer. Oh my gosh. I just noticed that poor Fracas, Fraca back there, she had a rough night. It looks like she drank too much and is leaning on her Joe Malone friend to the left there for, for some support. So let's keep it quiet. Let's talk in hushed tones because I imagine she has a splitting headache from too much partying last night. <laughs> All right, so let's start off with featuring some of the fragrances that I either reached for at least once or reached for the most this summer. And before I get into the fragrances that I wore, I want to say that even though I feature a lot of the fragrances that I wore over a month in those monthly fragrance award videos, I don't talk about all of them. Reason being, one, there isn't enough time or categories to talk about them all. And two, sometimes I like to talk about fragrances in those videos that I haven't talked about in a while, just to sort of spread the love across the fragrance collection in general. So I did wear both of the sea stars that were gifted to me by So Ava guard in PR, Orza and Talea, fantastic. I won't get into all the notes of all of these. I will do that for the top 10, the ones that make it into the time capsule, the Olympics of summer fragrances. Dun, 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 dun. I wore Arethusa, just sticking with Tiziana Terenzi. I absolutely wore Tibet, fabulous fragrance. I said I wasn't going to get into notes. Okay, stop it, Veronica. I wore Draco and I wore Berea. And that's just from what I can see on the shelf of the Tiziana Terenzi fragrances. Oh, I will probably wear Andromeda soon. She's the latest addition to the Tiziana Terenzi collection. I did wear my Veronique Goodbye Sur la Plage fragrance this summer. In the fruity corner, fruity floral corner, I did wear Alma's 
by Kajal. I think this is a, a like, a decent like. I wouldn't say it's a love. Bottle's pretty. I wore this one, sort of a hidden gem, very sexy oasis, at least hidden on YouTube. People don't really talk about Victoria's Secret fragrances on fragrance channels, which is a dang shame because there's some good ones. This is a good one. I definitely wore Dolce & Gabbana, Dolce Garden. I wore Passe Soir, which is like a fruity, woody fragrance that is really great all year round, but a lot of folks associate with the summer. I wore Shantakai Frangipani, gorgeous fragrance. I wore Leisure in Paradise, Simone Andrioli, an absolute delight. You can see I'm sucking it down here. <laughs> this is newer to my collection and I'm already through like a quarter of it. Well, maybe not quite a quarter, but something up in that range of fifth. Really, really good fragrance. I wore Holidays from Mansara. You only need a few sprays of this. I wore Le Beau from Jean-Paul Gaultier, which is marketed toward men. I wore Healy Coco Bello, another one that's marketed toward men and is a little bit drier and does lean a little masculine, but I like it a lot. I wore Sun de Joya from Armani. I wore Coco Vini from Mansara. And I wore Coco Love, which has a new name. I'll put it on the screen because I can't remember what it is right now. From Jacques, uh, what is it? Zolti, Jacques Zolti. Fantastic, creamy coconut fragrance. I wore Luna Dulcius from Accendus. Beautiful. This is my scent of the day. Estee Lauder, Bronze Goddess, Skin Au Fresh, I think it's called. Au Fresh Skin Scent. I wore Ariana Grande, Cloud 2.0 Intense, Creamy, Beautiful Coconut Aromatic. While I'm over in this section, I have not yet worn Coconut Ice Cream Gelato from Dua. I do like it. I have not yet worn Coconut Fizz from Guerlain. I have not yet worn Harajuku Lover's G. What do you call it? Electric Pop G. Excuse me. That's the name of it. What a hideous top. I have worn and would like to wear again soon. Kayali Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21. Fab. You lust. I wore Alien Goddess Intense. I have not worn Hawaii Volcano yet, which is a dupe of Creed Virgin Island Water. Really, really good dupe. I wore Sunkissed Hibiscus from Nest. I wore Terracotta. I have not worn this summer, but I have worn this year Vele from Tiziano Terenzi. I love. I have not worn, can you see it back there? Malibu Party in the Bay. I have worn Soleil Blanc from Tom Ford. And that's it for the coconut side. We're going to go more into the sort of citrusy fragrances in a minute, but I did want to talk about some more down here. I did wear a Lang in Gold Nectar. Oh my God. I realized just now I have not worn my bronze goddess, the EDP from, I think it's 2017. This is gorgeous. I need to pull this out soon before summer's over. And you can wear this in the winter too. It has a nice deep vanilla in it. I have worn Hibiscus Palm from Erin. I think of this as a summer fragrance, mostly because of the color of the bottle. But honestly, this is a year round beauty. Rare Tiffany from Afnan. Gorgeous floral, uh, musky, aquatic fragrance. I did wear and loved and will wear again soon. Soleil de Jetta uh, Mango Kiss from Stefan Humbert Lucas. Man, this is a banger of a fragrance. I've worn Moonlight in Paradise only to bed. I'm debating whether I want a full bottle of the original Killian um, Moonlight in Heaven, it's called. I have the little sticker on the back to remind me. This is Terry Mugler, Angel Ice Star, the Eau de Toilette with the pineapple and the coconut. And I like this. I think I'm ready to pass this along. I'm not sure. I wore this recently this week and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, but there are other fragrances that I'm really loving and want to reach for more than this now. But it's really, really nice. I wore da hop, da hop, da hop, ha 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 By Kajal. This has uh, apple and passion fruit, if I remember correctly. And man, is it a strong, deeply fruity, great fragrance that's good for year round because it has a heavy base to it. And I don't mean just the bottle. The bottle's heavy, yes, but <laughs> the actual base of the fragrance is strong too. Definitely wore this gorgeousness here. The Fragrance du Bois Ou Jean Intense. Beautiful, ridiculously expensive, but really good. I wore Bora Bora from Giardini di Toscana. Beautiful white, heady white floral with some coconut and a little bit of creaminess, but big, big white floral opening on this one. I have not worn, but would like to wear my gorgeous La Nuit Trésor Nude with the vanilla rose and coconut. So pretty. Okay, let's focus over here in this corner. By the way, I wore Rouge Malachite, Vert Malachite, and a bunch of these florals. I wore Fracas, uh, a bunch of these, but that's really not the focus of this video. I want to think about your tropical, summery, citrusy fragrances. But thinking very quickly over here in this rose corner, I absolutely wore Delina La Rose. I know it doesn't seem like I've gone through a lot, but that's probably a good four wears for me right there. I find this to be strong and long-lasting. Some 
other uh, peer reviewers here did not have the same experience. So definitely test this and see how it behaves for you before you purchase. But this is so delightful. Gold Coast from Bond Number no. 9 became a love this summer. I really enjoy this light fruity floral fragrance from the citrus area here and i've shared in other videos that my love for citrus has kind of waned a tiny bit here or maybe a good bit as i've developed more of a passion for other types of fragrances but i like to keep the ones that i am enjoying the most and that i think i'll reach for the most so i have worn un jardin Soulenil from hermes I wore Pavra Pomelo from Atelier Materie. Fabulous, great fruity type of fragrance. Doesn't last the longest, but man, is it really, really fantastic while it does last. I would say a hidden gem that people should check out if they like earthy and citrusy fragrances combined. Orange and Bergamot from Molten Brown is fantastic. Love this marble top on it too. I ended up getting one that is, I think it's called Milk Musk. It's on a different shelf from Molten Brown that I love and I'm gonna feature in a, a video here soon. You know I wore Mandarin Basilique from Aqua Allegoria's line from Guerlain. This is one of the most unique, really fascinating, intriguing summer fragrances with the basil note and a strong Mandarin, absolutely fabulous. I wore Clementine Cal California from Atelier Cologne. I did wear Aqua de Joya from Giorgio Armani. I don't think I talked about this in my monthly video and I don't remember why, but I did wear it. I love, love, love this back in the day. I still have a very strong, strong like. I can't say that it's like a top love, but man, I just adore the bottle. I do like the sort of general fragrance profile and I wanna absolutely keep it in the collection. I have not worn, but I need to wear because I really like them. Limon Verde from Guerlain. Oud Lemon Mint from Mancera. It's a beauty. And then Lolita Lempica back there, Green Lover, is a really good one. Kind of a toothpaste minty sort of fragrance. Really neat experience to wear. Virgin Mint from Carolina Herrera back here. She needs to come out to play before summer's over. Ota Vert, I have sprayed here or there, but I haven't done a full day wear recently. I did one in the spring. And then Eau d'Azur from Lancome is one of my more recent gems hidden gem type of fragrances that I wore uh, quite a bit when I first got it and should probably pull out again before summer's over. So I think that covers most of my major summery types of fragrances. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I've worn <laughs> Dolce & Gabbana, the only one intense, which is year round, but it has that coconut note. And so sometimes people think about this as like a luxe summer fragrance. This is so friggin' delicious. Can't get enough of that. And I've worn a bunch of others up here, but those are the ones that I wanted to mention. Now let's talk about the top 10 for summer. My summer capsule of the most beautiful fragrances that go in typical summer categories. <laughs> all right, now I have the really super challenging task of narrowing down all of those beautiful summer fragrances to the top 10. If I could only choose 10, which would they be? I wanted to think about this sort of across categories, noting I probably left off some really fantastic ones that if I could think about it a little further, may curate in a different way. Let's try this. So thinking about sort of the day to day, you've just showered, you've got your shorts and your t-shirt on, and you're ready to just go run around, do an errands, hang out with your friends, or maybe you have a casual summer dress on. Thinking about citrus leaning fragrances, my top two choices would be Mandarin Basilique, from Aqua Allegoria's uh, line from Guerlain. Now, there's a Forte version of this. I think that's what it is. I don't think it's called Bold. I think it's called Forte, like stronger, <laughs> that some folks have given a thumbs up to here, some of you, and some of you have said, no, it's not worth the difference. So if you've tried the Forte version, please weigh in in the comments and let our friends here know which one to pick up. But this fragrance is such a unique, absolutely, it makes my mouth water when I smell this. Sometimes YouTubers will say that in their videos and I'm like, does it really though? This really does make <laughs> my mouth water. Very fresh and like that tart citrus from the Mandarin and that beautiful basil is, basil's a thing for me. <laughs> it's also in that fragrance by Kenzo Le Monde de Beau. I love basil as an herb in cooking and I love to smell it fresh. I love to crush it in between my fingers and get that just beautiful green aromatic herbal feel from it. It's so, so good. This has some sweetness in it. I've forgotten the notes, but there's something sweet that gives it a sugary aspect while at the same time staying straight up in citrus territory. This is a gem of a fragrance and I could literally douse myself in it. People complain about the longevity on this being a little bit on the lower end. I would say I can get anywhere from about four to six-ish hours from this fragrance if I'm moisturized. 
Okay, got a little oil on my skin or some lotion, and then I spray this on top, and it's it's friggin' fabulous. This is a gem of a fragrance. And then the other in this category is, I'm gonna go back to that orange and bergamot from Molten Brown. I just wanna warn people a little bit about this fragrance. Some may feel like it leans either a little bit masculine or rather it isn't feminine enough for some folks. No one has said that. That's just me thinking about all of the different comments that, have, that I've received on videos about different fragrances. I have forgotten again what the note structure says is in here, but definitely a citrus fragrance. It has some of that sort of citrus oil feel to it. I believe there's a little bit of earthy patchouli or at least that type of smell in here. And I don't remember if vetiver is in this fragrance or not, but I get that sort of hay-like background to this. It also though, has a little bit of touch of creaminess. So it's not just sort of a standard run-of-the-mill citrus that's just bright and light. It's a rather complex fragrance. I also describe this as having a fresh, wet earth smell, wet dirt, wet earth, which I really like, like that after the rain tincture that uh, smell that you get rising up off of hot earth. <laughs> that combined with citrus, and it's really unique and different. No one else will smell like this but you. Another easy day-to-day -day grab that isn't citrus and isn't quite in the deep sort of sunblock, suntan lotion, tropical category, but still deserves a spot on a summer list for me. And this one's newer to my collection. This is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau. This is an EDT concentration, but boy, does this perform. I don't mean well into the night, friends. I mean like a work day's worth. This does open a little bit sort of traditional masculine territory. However, it transforms quickly into a lovely day-to-day -day woody, vanillic, coconut or coconut, vanillic, woody fragrance rather is the best way to say this because I think more than anything, this has a nice woody base to it and is pretty squarely a unisex fragrance. It's a decently long lasting fragrance, as I said, in terms of summer scents, which many of them can fade really quickly. This one will take you through the day. When I've spritzed this, I have smelled it well into the dinner hours of the day. So this is fabulous and available on fragrance net and i believe i saw it on joma shop too recently i have a link in the description box if you're interested in shopping for fragrances on bargain through joma shop thank you okay so now we get more squarely into that beachy sunblock smell that people really associate with summer fragrances however i will say this is a fantastic year-round fragrance because it can be dense and it's long lasting and has a certain it's airy but also has a certain heft and heaviness to it mancera coco vanille look if you want a creamy version of a coconut, this, this is it. It is literally what it says, coconut and vanilla. I believe some people pick up, it's either citrus or some other fruit notes. Is there a peach in here? I don't remember exactly. There's some other sort of sweet note here that lends a little bit of dimension to it outside of the usual sort of creamy coconut and gourmandy type of vanilla. Yes, I can't say that I especially pick out what particular note it is, but there is something there. And I've considered this to be a bargain fragrance in some ways. It's available on lots of discounters. I think this is on Joma Shop as well. And you can get it, I wanna say in the neighborhood of between 70 and $90 US. But remember, this is a four ounce bottle and because it is a fairly well-performing fragrance, you can spritz just a few times. You don't have to spritz all up and down your body and go on about your day. And so this bottle will take you through years. So in that sense, it's a little bit of a, a bargain fragrance in my mind. Next for me is the obvious queen Queen of summer fragrances or one of two queens because I have another I have another queen coming up here that would like the crown as well but my favorite coconut fragrance by far is Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc in fact I'm thinking about getting another uh, bigger bottle of this because I'm going through this one pretty quickly I'm in this range right here <laughs> it's a nice little uh, one ounce bottle Another really beautiful creamy coconut, probably the most elegant summer fragrance that I have in my collection, maybe with the exception of one that I'll talk about here in a second. The creamy coconut is accompanied by beautiful white florals that are soft and accompanying. They are not loud. They don't take over the fragrance. They don't make this fragrance heady in any way. They just sit right squarely and nicely alongside this super duper luxe coconut scent. And there's also a hint of a little bit of like green citrusy, citrusy green thing happening in here that I think comes from, it's either bergamot or neroli, one of those types of citrusy either scents or oils. So there's like a splash of that to add some complexity to the fragrance. And you kind of need to like that to enjoy this as a summer fragrance. But by far, this one takes the crown as probably one of the most amazing summer fragrances. I consider to, this to be in masterpiece category. And this is the one that's competing for <laughs> the crown as the summer queen. 
Terracotta Le Parfum from Guerlain. Beautiful combination of white and yellow florals along with coconut. And there are other solar notes in here that give this such a warm base. You can wear this all day long. And for me, it shines especially as an evening fragrance, like right as the day turns into evening hours. You know, perhaps you have taken a fresh shower and put on your best summer dress and you're going out to dinner in your town or on the resort or on the boardwalk walk. <laughs> <laughs> on the boardwalk or wherever you may be going. Lovely fragrance. Longevity is moderate. It's not super long lasting. Okay. So you may get four to six hours out of this and need to re-up. Other people have said that this lasts longer on them and some say it lasts less. You need to understand what is meant by warm solar notes. And you're thinking about your skin warming up in the summertime after you've had sunblock on it. And maybe there is a garden nearby and the mixture of those two scents together with summer heat is a little bit of what this smells like with some added coconut and other florals. Complex fragrance, not for everyone. If you're newer to perfumes, the perfume world, this may seem a little bit dated, maybe a little mature for your taste. But as you continue sniffing, make sure you take a look at, or sniff rather, at take a sniff at, make sure you sniff Terracotta Le Parfum. Classic, beautiful summer fragrance. All right, moving further into the evening for a straight date night. I've got two fragrances in this category. Of course, you can wear them during the day. And of course, I wear them during the day. But in terms of a you know, traditional categorization, you just can't beat Dolce Garden. I know there are people that don't love this, granted. And I know there are people that don't enjoy the bottle design. Can't say that I you know, especially love that. I do like the base of it. I'm not sure how I feel about these flowers here. And some people think that this is just a straight up coconut fragrance. For me, it's a lot more complex than that. Yes, I get coconut here, but there's also white and yellow florals. It's got that traditional frangipani, alang alang combination, along with, I believe it's a magnolia note or one of those other like gardenia, magnolia, something like that, that balances out those sort of creamy, buttery aspects of the yellow florals. Vanilla, a beautiful, sexy vanilla and sandalwood. There's something else in here, I forget what it is, that adds some creaminess to this fragrance, but it is creamy, it is luscious, it's sexy, it's juicy, it's robust, it lasts a long time and it projects far. And for me, this is like the summer man killer fragrance, if that's a thing. Husband loves this and I've heard many people here on YouTube talk about their significant others also loving this fragrance on them and finding it sexy. This is, this is good, good stuff. Then if you'd like to splurge a little bit more and maybe Dolce Garden is a little bit too strong and creamy and in your face for you, you may want to give a sniff to Oud Jaune Intense from Fragrance Dubois. Now, there is a dupe that Dua sells of this that's called Sunlight Something. I'll put the name up here that smells very, very, very close to this if you don't want to spring for this kind of money. This is an expensive fragrance, <laughs> but it's just a classic, exquisite summer fragrance. The main difference between Dolce Garden and this is that this features a tiara flower, which is a little bit different than the other uh, summer florals. And this has a little bit more of like an airiness, I would say, even bordering on slightly powdery, although this is also creamy. I wouldn't call this a powdery fragrance just to be clear, but it has some aspect of that. And I don't know what's lending uh, that sense to this, but I wanted to bring that up as a main difference, whereas Dolce Garden is thick and almost syrupy heavy. This is a little bit slightly lighter in texture than Dolce Garden. Also has a fruity aspect that makes this a little bit more like banana leaning than Dolce Garden does, which is more in the creamy coconut heavy floral territory. This is exquisite. It's really beautiful as a fragrance and I have to eat my words because when I first sampled this, I said that it doesn't last long. Well, I stand corrected. It does last quite a long time on me. The couple of times that I've worn it, it has taken me through the day. So, and if you're interested in purchasing this, if they still have it in stock, I would check soavantgarde.com. In the description box, I have the link and I also have a code for 20% off Veronica 20 that you can get off your entire order including this pretty unique beauty right here. So then I'm going to go to two fragrances that I'm just going to refer to lightheartedly as yacht party fragrances. <laughs> we say these ridiculous things sometimes on our YouTube videos. How many of us are actually having parties on yachts? I think I've maybe been to three types of events in my entire life. Maybe you do more and maybe you do none, but it's the vibe that I'm talking about. You're outdoors in the summer. This could be a barbecue, a summer barbecue. This could be a beach party. This could be a boardwalk, firework event, or something of that nature. 
you know, you're outdoors, you're having fun, you're having maybe some beverages, be they alcoholic or non-alcoholic with the little umbrella in them. That's the vibe we're talking about here. So this beauty, as I mentioned, I have been using and using, and it's Leisure in Paradise from Simone Andrioli. One of the rules for my top 10 is that I couldn't have more than one from a specific house where I would have also included Malibu Party in the Bay, but I have the alternative for that that I'm going to talk about in a second as my 10th fragrance for this one. So please sample. Some people do not enjoy this fragrance at all and feel like it does. The notes do not convey what this smells like or it doesn't live up to what they expect it. For me, it's everything, everything. It's coconut and vanilla, papaya, supposed to be some pineapple. Can I get some, some pineapple? There's a, a brightness that pineapple may lend. I don't know. And I forget what the other note is in here. But when I tell you that this is just a milky tropical delight for me, maybe even creamy, it's like somewhere between milky and creamy. And it's not a majorly long lasting fragrance. I get a number of hours, somewhere in the three to four, maybe five hour range. And it becomes really skin scentish after that. And it's so worth applying. There's something now that I smell it, it's almost like it's candy, like tropical candy for me not overly concentrated sweet candy, but just like a whiff, a whiff. Instead of whiff of a waffle cone, whiff of a summer party. This is amazing to me. Probably one of the most unique summer smells that I've gotten my nose on. And I love this and I'm going to keep using it. This is so, so good. It's good. Then, like I said, I wanted to put Malibu party in the bay in this mix, but it's from the same house and it is fantastic. If you like Virgin Island water from Creed, have any idea what that smells like? Malibu Party in the Bay is almost like a concentrated version of that. But I have the dupe for Creed Virgin Island water, Hawaii Volcano from Alexandria. So what? <laughs> this is so good. Lime, coconut, and liquor, like rum, some kind of white, white rum, not the spiced rum, not the Captain Morgan's, put that aside. Some other, <laughs> not Bacardi either. Some other kind of rum, all right? There's a rum, a rum note in here freaking good, so bright and fresh, not the most feminine leaning fragrance. I wouldn't say it's very masculine, maybe more unisex leaning masculine or something of that nature, but bright and fun and gives you the sense that you are living your best summer life. Really good fragrance here, long lasting. If you found that Virgin Island water faded fast on you, this one is more projecting and longer lasting. And I haven't checked out the intense or extreme version or whatever of this. So if you have that, please let us know your thoughts on it. So those are my top 10 best of all time, at least this year of my summer fragrances. Let me know your thoughts on these. I'd love to do this again next summer and see what emerges as the top 10 then. This was a fun exercise to see what am I really, really, really loving, loving, g -g 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 -g. lots of G's this summer. Y'all take care. I hope you're having a wonderful summer. If you're in the Northern hemisphere, enjoy these last few weeks, or if you're in hotter zones the last month, and if you're in the Southern hemisphere, get your hands on some of these as summer approaches. Take care, friends.